With just nine days left on the campaign clock, Republicans are claiming all of the midterm momentum. And I think you're going to see a wave, an unprecedented wave, uh, on Election Day. Michael Steele thinks that wave will absolutely leave the GOP with a majority in the House and maybe even the Senate. Democrats say the tide is turning their way, with President Obama fresh off his longest campaign blitz yet for vulnerable Democrats. Party leaders are convinced he's closing the enthusiasm gap. From this point forward, it's all about turnout and ground game, and we're seeing good early voting trends, and, and we, we've got work to do, but we think we can do it. But early voting may not be good news in Nevada, where the president campaigned last week for Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid. The endangered Democrat is in the re-election fight of his career against Tea Party favorite Sharon Angle. And so far, Republicans are outpacing Democrats in getting their voters to the polls. The GOP's also got a two-to-one edge in campaign contributions from outside groups, with much of it from anonymous donors. Two conservative groups led by Karl Rove are expected to raise $65 million to help fund the Republican surge. And, and, and let's just be honest, I would like to have a different system, but we have the system we have. Rove argues Republicans are merely leveling the playing field, since Democrats get money from outside groups too, $87 million alone from a union of state and local government employees. But Democrats say that GOP's donors will be expecting payback down the line. These big interests are fighting hard to get back in power, and I think the American people are waking up to that fact. While these midterm elections are expected to be the most expensive in history, there is proof that the money isn't everything. Three wealthy Republican candidates have spent a combined $243 million for their campaigns, and none of the big spending candidates is leading in the polls. Randall? Thank you, Joel Brown in Washington.